leverage can destroy your account. If you don't believe me, ask anyone who's blown an account before. But it can also create some incredible returns based on your deposit. There's two ways to use leverage, one of which will help you in blowing that account, which you don't want to do. The other will help you maximize the gains you can make on every single trade. So in today's video, I want to teach you how to avoid the pitfall of blowing an account because of leverage and how to maximize every trade you place using leverage. So if leverage is something that you have been confused about at all, then pay attention throughout today's video because I'm going to clear everything up for you. And what I need you to do before I roll the intro and disclaimer and get this video started is go ahead and click that like button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in learning more about the Forex market. We come out with new free videos each and every week here on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram over at the trading channel. And I will see you right after the intro and disclaimer. What's up and welcome to lesson number four in our all-inclusive beginner Forex trading course that is going to be everything that you need in order to start your Forex trading journey. This video, you read it right folks, is all about leverage. So by the end of this video, you're not only going to know what leverage is, but you're also going to understand why a lot of traders end up blowing accounts because of it, how to avoid that, and the proper way to actually use leverage by the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started with what is leverage. And the way we're going to do that is by using an example of the housing market. So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. Let's say, by the way, in the housing market, when you want to get a loan for a house, you actually need 20% down on that property in order to purchase that property. So let's say you find a property that you want to invest in, and this property is $100,000. In the case of this property, be, property being $100,000, how much do you need to deposit how much of a down payment do you need in order to buy this house or invest in this house? You need $20,000, right? So let's say you come across the greatest bank in the world and they come up to you and they say, hey, we know you want this property. What we're going to do is we're going to take your $20,000 and we're going to give you this $100,000 piece of property. You can hold it as long as you want. You don't have to make any payments on this property, but when you decide to sell it, you still owe us $100,000. So that means if the market crashes and this house's property drops like crazy, you still owe us $100,000 whenever you decide to sell. And if the housing market goes up, vice versa, you still owe us $100,000. So let's do this scenario. Let's say you say, okay, yeah, great deal. That is an amazing deal. So let's do it and you buy this $100,000 property with a $20,000 down payment and you have no payments. And then throughout the course of 12 months, the housing market drops 50%. Oh no, right? So now your property that was worth $100,000 is now only worth $50,000. But guess what? That bank already told you whether the market goes up or down, you owe us our $100,000 back. So in this case, you decide to sell for a loss. How much did you lose on this house? You lost that $50,000. That sucks, right? So this is the power of leverage in terms of how it can hurt you. You lost more than your initial down payment, more than your deposit, maybe more than you had if $20,000 is all you had to invest. Is this sounding familiar? Kind of like leverage in the Forex market? And some of the horror stories you've heard. So that's how leverage can hurt you, right? And in terms of helping you, we can do this other scenario because guess what? Just as bad as it can hurt you, it can help you make ridiculous returns as well when you use it correctly. So let's say the same scenario, you pay $20,000. They say, here's this $100,000 property to hold. This time, instead of the market dropping by 50%, we go up. 50% over the next 12 months. So with the housing market going up 50%, you now have this property that was worth a hundred grand that is now worth $150,000. And guess what? The bank says the same thing. Whenever you sell at that 12 month period, the bank says, okay, you've sold, you owe us hundred K. 
In that case, you give them their 100K back and you end up with a plus $50,000 profit. So in this case, you made more than your initial down payment. That is the power of leverage. Leverage can allow you to make ridiculous returns and also, unfortunately, can cause you to lose even more than you initially invested. Now, Forex is a little different because there's a thing called margin call, but now that you know what leverage is, let's relate it back over to Forex. And by the way, this bank, the $20,000, and it will let you hold a 100K property, is the broker. So let's jump into an actual Forex scenario with this being the case. Let's go ahead and delete all of this. So in Forex, I'm gonna draw out a little graph here. We have about four different types of major leverage that people or brokers allow you to have. And we have one to 10 leverage, one to 20, one to 50, and one to 100 leverage. Now, each of these means that you have your account times the leverage you get in buying power. So let's say you have a $1,000 account. Just to make math super simple, that means with one to 10 leverage, you have 10K buying power. One to 20, you have 20K buying power. This is self-explanatory, but I'm gonna write it down anyway. 50K buying power at one to 50 and 100K buying power at one to 100. Now here is the reason most traders blow their entire accounts using leverage. Most traders say I have a thousand dollar account, but, but I have 10 K in buying power. So what do I need to do? Obviously I need to buy 10,000 units of the Euro dollar and hope that that shit goes up. That's not how you want to use leverage. That is the worst way to use leverage. And let me help you understand why we're going to use $1,000 account size as an example. And we're going to use the 50 to one leverage because in the United States, that is the maximum amount of leverage they allow you to have. And personally, 50 to one leverage is what I use. So with a $1,000 account, let's look at this as if you don't have any leverage. You have a $1,000 account. We've talked about order sizes, right? How many units can you purchase with a $1,000 account and no leverage at all? 1,000 units, right? Self-explanatory. 1,000 units. What is 1,000 units? That is a micro lot. One micro lot on most pairs means that you are the value of a pip for your position. Stay with me. If you haven't studied lot sizes and stuff, we have another video on that that you've probably just watched. Hopefully this 1000, 1000 unit micro lot is worth 10 cents per pip. Okay. So if you have a $1,000 account, that means you can trade at maximum. If you are all in on a trade, you can have 1,000 units of a currency. Let's say you have 1,000 units of the Euro dollar. And you say, cool, I have 1,000 units. These, this micro lot means that every pip the Euro dollar moves is 10 cents per pip. In this case, I want you to look at risk as how many pips you can lose. How many pips could you lose at 10 cents a pip if you have a $1,000 account and no leverage? You could lose 10,000 pips before you blow your account. That's awesome. It, this is why not using leverage at the beginning is a pretty good idea. If you're just now starting out, you're gonna have a lot of losses, but if you have 10,000 pips of room before you blow your account, then you would have to lose a lot of trades to actually blow your account. Here's where leverage actually can really hurt you because let's take this same, same $1,000 and we'll actually keep all of this on the screen. We have this $1,000. Sorry if it gets a little messy here, guys. I'll color this a different color to make it a little bit easier. Let's go with blue. I like blue. So we have this $1,000 account, but now, separate this. Now you have your $1,000 account with a 50 to one leverage, which means you have $50,000 in buying power. Now here's what you need to understand. The brokerage is not going to let you lose 50 grand before you lose the one grand that you have. They are going to do something called margin call. This number, your capital is called margin 50 to one on leverage means that you have for every $1 of margin, you have $50 that you can put into a position. So in this case, let's say you max it out and you said, I have 50,000 units to trade the guy that we were talking about on the Euro dollar, right? 
I've got my 50,000 units. Let me just buy the Euro dollar right now. So you buy Euro USD, same example. And with this Euro USD trade, you have spent your full 50,000 units. What is 50,000 units? Remember 10,000 units is a mini lot. And a mini lot has a value per pip of $1. So if we have five mini lots, how much is our value per pip on this trade? Our value per pip, which we're gonna label with VPP, on our Euro dollar trade is $5. You see the difference here? This was 10 cents per pip, but because we're using leverage over here, we have $5 per pip. Now, can this work for you? Absolutely. Yeah, you can make a lot more money at $5 per pip than at 10 cents per pip. No one is doubting that. I'm not saying you can't do that. But as a beginner, do you think it's more likely you're going to hit home runs or swing and miss most of the time? Swing and miss, you're right. A lot of times as beginners, you're expected to lose, right? So it's okay to lose. But if you have your entire account balance, your $1,000 in margin, which gives you $50,000 in buying power on this position, how many pips do you have that you can lose before your account goes to absolutely zero? Where it was 10,000 pips, now the math we have to do is your $5 per pip and your account balance. So now what we need to do is take your account balance of $1,000 because again, they're not gonna allow you to lose more than $1,000. And if you're risking $5 per pip, that means you, divided by $5, let's do this, let's finish the math, that means you only have 200 pips because 200 times five is $1,000. That takes your count away. So instead of 10,000 pips of risk, the reason most traders blow their accounts using leverage is because they only have 200 pips of risk. And guess what? You don't really have 200 pips of risk because they are going to margin call this is the weirdest looking pen. Let me, let me change that, sorry. Margin call you at somewhere around 80 to 90%. So instead of 200 pips, it's more like you have about 160 pips, maybe 170 pips of risk before you get a margin call, which is when they take all of your trades away and you're left with a balance of about 10% of your original capital. So you would be left with a hundred dollar account after 160 pips of movement out of the Euro dollar. If you just had one wrong guess. So let's say you do this and you guess wrong on the Euro dollar and you're new. So you don't understand stop losses and the Euro dollar moves at 160 pips, which is doing multiple times every day at this point because of the volatility we're seeing in the market. You could lose your whole account balance in one day doing this. That's what, that's the danger and the reason that most beginners using leverage end up blowing their account before they have a chance to make any money at all. That's the danger of leverage and that's what you need to understand. And there's a correct way to use leverage as well. This would be the wrong way to use leverage. You don't want to max out. You don't want to max out and be trading with leverage and trading your entire account value because that gives you a very small margin of error. Again, we're talking about that 200 pips is all you have, probably closer to about 160. So if you only have 200 pips that you can lose, that's a pretty easy amount to lose. It's easy to lose 200 pips. And in a day, in the way the markets are moving right now, again, the danger of leverage is that you have way less risk, that way, way less pips you can lose before you blow your entire account, 200 against the 10,000 with no leverage at all. So that's the wrong way to use leverage. What's the proper way to use leverage? That's how you blow an account using leverage. How do you use leverage to your advantage to actually make more than your initial deposit? Let's go over that right now. So here is the proper way to use leverage. One, lesson number one, always use a stop loss if you're using a leveraged account. If you're not, you're putting yourself in this ridiculous risky situation and as traders, avoiding risk is half the battle. So always, and I mean always, use a stop loss with leverage. But let's talk about the power of leverage and what it can actually help you do. Same scenario we've been discussing. $1,000 account with 50 to 1 leverage. 
So if you have a $1,000 account and 50 to one leverage, what's the correct way of using that leverage? Well, it's first to decide what your risk management plan is going to be. How much are you going to risk per trade? For me, and only for me, I'm not suggesting anything to you. This is for entertainment. I hope you're entertained. For me, I risk between 1% and 2% of my total account balance per trade. So in this case, that would be $10 to $20. Let's keep it simple with $10. So if I want to risk $10, let's say I want to risk... 2% of this, which is $10 on a trade, I need to know the amount of pips I'm going to lose or could possibly lose in order to create this $10 loss. And how do we do that? Well, let's say that we have a 100 pip stop loss, okay? The Euro dollar 100 pip trade, the same one we've been discussing during the entire video. So this Euro USD trade has a maximum loss of 100 pips. Now, in order to create this scenario where I'm possibly losing $10 on a 100 pip loss, I have to figure out my price per pip in terms of the 100 pip stop loss. And the way you do that is with an equ equation. The equation is the amount of dollars you want to risk, which is $10. I don't know why I put percent right there. $10. And this $10 has to be divided by the amount of pips we're going to lose. $10 divided by 100 pips equals 10 cents per pip. This is where it gets a little bit easier. Now we know that we need a value of 10 cents per pip on this trade. Why? Because we have a 100 pip stop loss and I want to risk 1% of my account, which means I need 10 cents per pip times that 100 to give me that $10 risk. With 10 cents per pip, we've talked about this already, that means you need one micro lot. Now one micro lot would cost you $1,000 because you are controlling 1,000 units of currency with a micro lot. So if you had no margin, this would be your entire account. But with margin, the power of margin and the way to use it correctly after you have all of this calculated, you know your stop loss is putting you at a $10 risk, which is 1% of your account value, your one micro lot that would cost you $1,000 no longer cost you $1,000. Now it's coming out of something called margin, which is your capital. So you have this full capital of margin that they are giving you 50 to one on. This full capital of margin means you're getting $50 for every $1 you invest into a position. So if I'm investing $1,000 into a position, what do I have to do? I have to divide that $1,000 by my 50 to one leverage which gives me $20. What this means is that instead of costing me my full account of $1,000 in order to place this trade, instead of $1,000, this now only costs me $20. So instead of $1,000 on this trade, I've only had to put up the deposit of $20. So this is like the bank in the beginning of this video, the scenario we talked about houses, this is a very similar situation. You're giving your broker 20 bucks. They're saying, here's a thousand units. You hold on to that thousand units as long as you want. But when you decide to sell that thousand units, we want that thousand dollars back, no matter what. If, if your investment goes up or down, we want that thousand units back. So when this investment goes up, you make money. But if it goes down, you still owe them a thousand bucks but instead of losing $1,000, you've only lost $10. And here's that math. So this is gonna be very familiar math. We're looking at Euro. This is the actual trade itself. This is what it looks like. Euro and dollars. What you said is I want 1,000 euros. Let, let's do the price of the Euro dollar right now. Price of the Euro dollar right now is 1.1042. You said I want 1,000 euros. This is the actual trade, what it looks like in your brokerage. I want 1000 units of euro. And they said, okay, in order to give you 1000 units of euro, the exchange rate right now is 1.1042. They say, okay, if you want 1000 euros, we're going to need $1,104 from you. But then the bank goes, I've got you at a 50 or the broker to one leverage, which means we really only need 20 dollars on margin for you to do this. 
because your twenty dollars is equal to a thousand units. So you say, cool, here's my twenty dollars. Hold on to it. I'll hold this thousand units until the price fluctuates either up or down. You still have your same one thousand units of euro, but now let's say the price drops from the euro from one point one oh four two. We have a decrease in value down to one point oh nine four two, which would be a drop of 100 pips, which is what our stop loss was set at. So when it drops down to 1.0942, your stop loss gets hit and you say, here's your 1000 euros back. But now the exchange rate is lower. So even though your investment dropped in value, they still expect that same 1000 euros in order to give them 1000 euros. You now have to hand them $1,094. So therefore, because of that, your investment dropped $10. And that's the actual math on this specific trade. Now in the other scenario, let's say that the market goes up uh, 200 pips. Let's say you had a two to one risk reward. So let's delete this and do the math on this as well. To make sure you fully comprehend leverage, this is going to be extremely helpful. Let's say you had a two to one risk reward on this trade. So instead of going down 100 pips, now we go to 1.1242, or we rose by 200 pips, a two to one risk reward. So now your bank said $20 and we'll let you hold 1,000 euros at the price of 1.1042 or $1,104, and we'll let you hold this 1,000 euros as long as you want, as long as whenever you pay us back, you give us that same 1,000 euro value. So we say, okay, cool. But this time the Euro dollar goes up by 200 pips. So now instead of your investment being worth $1,104, your investment is now worth $1,124. Meaning that instead of losing $10, your investment actually went up $20. And the power of having leverage means that instead of spending Remember, in order to get this position size, originally, you would have had to spend your entire $1,000 account. But instead of having to spend your entire $1,000 account to make this $20 over here, you now have made $20 on an initial $20 investment because of the power of leverage. So you've made 100% gain on this specific trade because you have leverage to the point you only spent $20 of your actual capital in order to make $20 on the other side of that. So that is the power of leverage and the way of using it correctly. So what does leverage really allow us to do? In a nutshell, if you use leverage correctly, it's not going to allow you to trade with this massive size and risk all this money and essentially gamble. It doesn't allow you to get rich in three days. It doesn't allow you to triple your account this week. Leverage allows you to be in more trades at one time and to put an initial deposit down of a small amount in order to purchase a larger position when you have a stop loss. The stop loss is so important. When you have a set risk management plan, if you have that set risk management plan, you have a $1,000 account and you're doing risk management correctly, you're only risking $10 per trade, leverage just allows you to be in more trades. As long as you have this $10 risk, it's okay to be in a bunch of trades. You can be in 20 trades and you're still only risking 200 bucks. So you're not at all putting your account in jeopardy as long as you have this risk management in place. So that's how you combine risk management with leverage. And that's the only way you should be using leverage. I hope this video has taught you everything you need to know about leverage. I know it was a long one, but leverage is a kind of a complicated subject that takes a while to understand. If you had any doubts or for any reason are confused about leverage, I would suggest going back and watching this one more time. You will be surprised at the amount of stuff you pick up on. Again, hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Don't over leverage and don't risk it all.